Welcome back to the Super Data Science series on PySpark. As a quick recap, in the last video, we ran through our California housing data set and ran some operations within data frames uh, on manipulating what we have. You can see if we scroll through our file, just to get yourself reacquainted, if you're just jumping in, you can see the DF commands that are allowing us to work with our data and manipulate it. We also are cleaning it up to get specific values as well. Now, as we move on, we are focusing on implementing a specific algorithm from PySpark, which you can see if you visit the MLib main guide. We're looking at collaborative filtering. And now looking at the definition that PySpark and Apache Spark has for us, collaborative filtering is commonly used for recommender systems. These techniques aim to fill a miss in the missing entries of a user item association matrix. Spark MLib currently supports model-based collaborative filtering in which the users and products are described by a small set of latent factors that can be used to predict missing entries. I'm sure some of you every day see collaborative filtering and see recommender systems. Now, easy examples of recommender systems would be if you take a look at Netflix. So say you watch a specific video on Netflix, a specific movie, you all of a sudden have other recommended videos and movies and shows similar or based on specific features and data points within. Now this is a recommended a recommender system. Um, Netflix does a very good job of it. You know, they take in um, extensive amounts of data points. Another example would be if you go to apply for a job and you see other jobs pop up that were similar, or if you go to Amazon and you purchase something and you see other recommended or similar items. You know, these are recommender systems. Some may use some different te techniques or multiple techniques combined. Right now, we're just gonna be looking at collaborative filtering and we're going to be examining the example that is provided by Apache Spark, which comes down to explicit versus implicit feedback. And again, the standard approach, as we can see here, to matrix factorization, you know, we're working with these data points within the matrices, so let's repeat that. The standard approach to matrix factorization based collaborative filtering treats the entries in the user item matrix as explicit preferences given by the user to the item, for example, users giving ratings to movies. And to understand it a little further, you can take away the core of implicit versus explicit, we can see in this paragraph the comparison, which states it is common in many real world use cases to only have access to implicit feedback, views, clicks, purchase, likes, shares, etc. You know, these are our solid examples of the implicit feedback. The approach using Spark and MLib, the algorithm that we're going to be implementing or using to deal with such data is taken from the collaborative filtering for implicit feedback data sets. Essentially, instead of trying to model the matrix of ratings directly, this approach treats the data as numbers representing the strength and observations of users' actions, such as number of clicks or the cumulative duration someone spent viewing a movie. Those numbers are then related to the level of confidence in observed user preferences rather than explicit ratings given to items. The model then tries to find latent factors that, became, that can be used to predict the expected preference of a user for an item. What we really want to take away here is this. The approach treats the data as numbers representing the strength in observations of users' actions. What it's doing is treating the data as numbers representing the strength in observations, representing the strength such as the number of clicks again, purchases, likes, shares, now it's it's taking this and essentially transforming it into a data point that we can then use to scale, to compare, to weigh, to build our recommender um, our recommender systems. And if you want, I, I as always I recommend just scrolling through the information provided here. We're going to be moving on in a second, but this is just one algorithm built um, from Apache Spark that it just comes. Uh, you know, right out of the box once it's installed and set up. You can see you know, other um, information. Again, just to reiterate, just to go over it, you have your basic statistics, pipelines, et cetera, et cetera. We're working with our collabor collaborative filtering. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna analyze the example provided here from Apache Spark, which you can find at the following address. We're going to need the following file, which you can find at this link right here. We just want the test data file. We're going to end up just using this to analyze and running the algorithm built because we want to kind of break it down. 
and see what Apache Spark is doing in this. So when you have the chance, please either download the example file, upload it into Jupyter so we can run it. You know, we're gonna be passing it in. It won't be the exact path, but similar to what we did before, we will be implementing it in our Jupyter Notebook. So it will find the, the relative path that you upload it into your Jupyter Notebook. And now we need to start What's the first thing we knew we need to do when you are working with algorithms built uh, from Apache Spark or really just a principle of data science and AI machine learning in general, if you have the pre-built or the uh, essentially the API for the recommended recommendation system, we need to import it. We're going to import it so we can run it with ease. So we don't have to define it. We don't have to write pure Python to use it. So we're going to be taking the following as an example. And we need to import this. All right. So you can run that. We have our from PySpark MLlib dot recommendation import ALS matrix factorization model and rating. We want to load our data. How we're going to do this? We're going to call it data. And we're going to use our text file. Remember how we loaded this in earlier a few videos ago? We want to load in the text file, and here we're going to add our path. Now our path will be how you loaded it in your Jupyter Notebook. Mine was named PySpark.data. And now we also want to continue this. So we're going to return to the next line and we're going to set a ratings. We're going to define ratings equals data.map. So we're calling that off, excuse me, off our data file. Data.map. Now we're going to use Python's Lambda. And we want to clean our file to organize it since we have mapped it. We're going to pass following in, we're going to run a backspace, and we're going to call dot map again. And we want to run lambda rating. And we're going to use our integers to access the specific numeric columns. Zero. I need to set a comma to space it out because we want to run it up to two, accessing all three. Two, comma, and the same, a comma. And then we also want to pass in, we're not going to use in, we are going to use float. Working with our specific values. Now we need to pass in two, and we can close that out. And now let's run. Oh, excuse me. As you can see, we have a syntax. One great thing is Python. We have our traceback, our, our errors coming up. We can see that we have a syntax error. We want to, I had the one instead of um, an L passed in. We need to change that to run it. All right, so we have that set. And again, you know, we are working from the example provided here just because we want to get a good idea and they do such a great job of providing the documentation, but we're also going to, you know, experiment with some values once we have it built and see what we can come with, with, come up with, with, with this algorithm, with, with the collaborative filtering. Again, it's an RDD based API. And in the next part of the video, we're going to actually be building the recommendation model. We're going to be setting some iterations and we're also going to be evaluating the model on some training data and we're going to wrap it up and then we'll do some experimentation with the values and we'll see how our uh, algorithm performs for the recommendation model. And as a last recommendation, since we just passed in our data file, you should try and call some DF commands when, to visualize it. You know, it is a simple file as we've seen before. It just has, you know, the three basic columns of data that we're working with, uh, the numerical values, but why not try and use some DF commands that we've learned previously in the tutorials just to get more comfortable with it. It'll help you visualize it, help you understand what you're working with, just to get a better idea of the data in general for the recommendation system. That being said, as always, please subscribe to the Super Data Science channel where you will get up-to-date weekly information. There's some incredible things going on within the industry, always new things to learn, always updates. So. I highly encourage you to take a look. Also, please feel free to like, comment, and share on the video, post any questions, and we will move to the next part in this series and continue with the recommendation algorithm. All right.
We'll see you there.